Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one online platform for creatives. In 1923, legendary camera engineer Oscar Barnack was sat inside his laboratory at the Leica factory in Wetzlar, Germany, finishing production of a 35 millimeter prototype camera called the Leica Zero, and he would make 22 of these. And out of those 22, he ended up keeping one for himself, which was number 105. And little did he know at the time, the Leica Zero would go on to be considered one of the most influential cameras of all time, and that his personal copy, 105, would go on to set a record by far for the most expensive camera ever sold. And the amount that it went for is absolutely staggering. So in this video today, we're gonna to take a look at some of the most expensive and rare film cameras and lenses ever sold. And this isn't gonna be like a in order one to 10 when it comes to most expensive because it would pretty much just be a list of Leicas. It would get boring very quickly. Uh, instead, I set out to try and find some of the most like interesting and unique and even strange pieces of gear that I could. And they're obviously still all very expensive. Okay, so to kick things off, gonna go against everything I just said, and we're actually gonna start with a Leica. Not the Leica Zero, but a Leica that you might not expect to be on a list like this. So in 1973, Leica, after building cameras out of their factory in Wetzlar, Germany for the previous 50 years, said, hey, why don't we go and partner up with Minolta out of Japan and start building some cameras in a factory in Portugal? And the result, was the Leica CL, also known as the Minolta CLE. And this was essentially a lighter weight, more affordable rangefinder camera, still with an M mount. And these cameras were only made for a few years. Nowadays, you can pick one of these up for like $1,000 with a 40 mil lens. So one of the more affordable ways to get into the Leica system. And because of this, I was surprised when I came across an ad on the Lights Auction website back catalogs back from November of 2013 for a pair of prototype cameras, a Leica CL and CM. So the auction included an unengraved Leica CL and also an engraved Leica CM, and it closed with a final hammer price of 480,000 euros, which is an absolutely staggering amount. That's the equivalent of about 480 Leica CLs nowadays. But, you know, regardless, fascinating piece of like history but a lot of money so next on the list is a camera that i'd never even heard of before and this is a zoo now slr back in june of 2022 a package that consisted of a camera body three lenses a box and some accessories sold for 120 thousand euros. So if you're not familiar, the Zunao is a 35 millimeter SLR made in Japan by the Zunao Optical Industry back in 1958. And they only made this for a few years in really small numbers. So it's incredibly rare. But what makes this camera extra special is that it was very ahead of its time and incorporated a few features which are often debated as being firsts. So an instant return mirror, auto diaphragm on the lens, a pentaprism that was also removable, had things like a single stroke film advance. And then Zunao had some pretty impressive lenses for the time as well when it came to speed. So they had a 58 millimeter F1.2 and also a 100 mil F2 lens. If you are interested though, you know, maybe you think one of these might be a nice fit. You wanna use it for your next project. I did find one currently for sale on eBay for the low price of $99,999. So next up is one of the cheapest cameras we're gonna talk about today. Still a lot of money, but it's from a manufacturer that you probably weren't expecting to hear, and that manufacturer is Kiev. When you think of Kiev, you probably think of the rangefinder cameras they made or the intriguing but often problematic Kiev 60s and Kiev 88s. Well, little did I know that Kiev in 1983 started production on the Kiev 90, which was a 645 medium format film camera, apparently inspired by the Mamiya 645. So this camera had an electronic shutter, swappable finders, and then used the same lens mount as the Kiev 60, and obviously the same lenses as well. So this camera was made in very limited amounts. Uh, some research says around 2,000 of them were made, but the auction website that I found this listing said that in the first year of production, they only made five of these cameras. So if you're interested, might be a little bit difficult to find one, and also might be a little bit expensive 
In November of 2021, Lights Auction sold a Kia of 90, number one, apparently the first one ever made with a matching Volna 3 80 mm lens, a box and some accessories for a cool 21,600 euros. So a ton of money, but actually starting to sound a little bit more affordable as we get into things here. And this was just an interesting one for me, far from being the most expensive, but I love finding out about cameras that you never knew existed from manufacturers that are relatively well known. Up next, for any of you space buffs out there, this one is about as good as it gets. This is the Holy Grail Space Cam, the Hasselblad 500 HEDC NASA Jim Irwin. On July 26, 1971, at exactly 9.34 a.m., Apollo 15 launched from Cape Carnival with astronauts David Scott and James Irwin, successfully landing on the moon on July 30th, where they would complete a record-setting 18 hours and 37 minutes of exploration with a lunar rover. Irwin, of course, didn't bring just one Hasselblad. He brought three, as well as a bunch of other camera gear, and during just the lunar exploration alone, ended up shooting 1,151 images with the Hasselblad cameras. And you would expect a camera like this to fetch quite a bit. And this one definitely did, selling at auction back in March of 2014 for 660,000 euros. So this is a fascinating camera that comes with a special NASA 60 mil lens. It also has control tabs designed for using your chunky space mitts and a 200 exposure magazine, which is pretty cool. So basically a Hasselblad 500 on steroids. And what makes this camera kind of extra, extra special is that over the course of all of the Apollo missions, they took, I think, 14 to 15 Hasselblads up to the moon and only two of them ever made it back. They abandoned the rest up there instead opting to bring back some exciting bags of lunar rocks. So this camera, pretty cool, been to the surface of the moon and uh, by far, for me, the most interesting one on this list. Okay, so some more really interesting cameras coming up. Just gotta take a quick second to talk about the sponsor today, which is Squarespace. So when it comes to building a website, what is important to me is finding something that's easy to use and is flexible for my business and Squarespace checks all of those boxes. They have a wide range of really great looking templates to choose from, and they're easily customizable. As a photographer, I love that I can set up a gallery and then simply just click and drag to organize and rearrange my images. And then I can also easily add things like an online shop for selling things like my latest book, or even connect with third-party integrations to offer high quality prints at the click of a button. So check out squarespace.com today, sign up for a free trial, play around, test things out, and when you're ready to launch, you can use my link below, which will save you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, on to the next one. So next up is the Dongfang, or East Win Hasselblad copy camera, and this is apparently the rarest Chinese camera ever made. So the Dongfang was built in 1970 in Shanghai to commemorate the 20 year anniversary of the Chinese revolution. And from my research, only 97 were ever made. And that's because the whole point of building this camera wasn't to mass produce it. Rather, it was to show representatives from other countries kind of the capabilities of the Chinese industry. So this is a direct Hasselblad copy. You can see it right away, as well as the lenses being Zeiss copies. And in November of 2013, again, Lights Auction sold a kit which consisted of apparently the first Dongfeng camera ever made, number one, with an 80 mil 2.8 lens and a 150 f4 for 66,000 euros. They also made a Leica M4 copy, around 200 of those for the same reason, and one of those sold for 48,000 euros. So a fascinating camera for collectors, but probably not my first choice if I had that type of money to spend. So next up is by far the weirdest camera in this video. This is what I'm calling the X-Pan for pigeons, the Adrian Michael or Michelle pigeon camera. And I actually had no idea that this was a thing. Pigeon photography is described as an aerial photography technique invented in 1907 by the Germans and then later used in the world wars. And apparently what you would do is you would get your little pigeon, strap a breastplate on it, and then you would mount this miniature camera, which 
had a self timer. It didn't need a little cable release for its pigeon claws or anything. And as long as it got to its destination, you'd be good to go. This particular camera is apparently ultra rare. It was more technologically advanced than others. It was built by the Swiss and it would shoot six or seven 10 by 36 millimeter panoramic images on 16 millimeter film. And in June of 2020, this particular camera sold at auction for 18,000 euros. So again, a favorite of mine, and I will never look at a pigeon the same way again. So we aren't just gonna look at cameras today. During my research, I also came across a few different lenses, which are very interesting, but also ridiculously expensive. This first one in particular is the most expensive camera lens ever sold. <laughs> In 1984, Canon chipped out five copies of a very unique lens to media photographers covering the Summer Olympics. This was a 1200 millimeter f5.6 L lens, and they later would convert this to EF mount and then start producing these, although they never released production numbers, and there's rumored to have been less than 20 of these made. Apparently, the process was so involved, Canon could only make two of these per year. So this is obviously a very, very rare lens, very niche. And one of these sold at auction in October of 2021 for 500,000 euros, which is absolutely crazy. So this caught me off guard. I had no idea this lens was a thing, nor did it sell for this amount of money. So this next lens didn't sell for nearly as much as the Canon, but it has by far a better story, probably the most unique story out of any of the gear in this video. And this is the Zeiss Super Q Gigantar 40 mil F0.33 lens. That's a mouthful. And yes, that is the actual aperture number. It exists. It's a real thing, sort of. So this lens went up for auction in May of 2021 and ended up selling for 60,000 euros. Still a lot of money, but what made me want to include it in this video is the story behind it. So back in the 60s, there was a bit of an obsession with fast lenses and companies competing against one another to innovate. And this was a time when Canon came out with the 50 mil 0.95 lens. So the PR people at Zeiss Icon decided to kind of poke a little bit of fun at this fad and they ended up making a Contorex mount lens that was assembled out of pieces that they found around the Zeiss lens department, uh, including an old condenser lens. And apparently the Q in the name stands for, I'm not gonna pronounce this right, but uh, Quash or Quatch or something like that, which in German translates, to nonsense. So definitely a little bit of like a cheeky move by Zeiss and I love it. Okay, one more Zeiss lens before we get to the finale. And I wanted to include this because this is considered the most special Zeiss lens ever made. So back in 1966, Carl Zeiss was contracted by NASA to create an ultra fast lens that they could photograph the far side of the moon with. And the result was the Planar 50 mil F 0.7. And there were only 10 of these lenses ever made. But what makes this lens extra special is that in 1975, Stanley Kubrick used three of them to film his classic Barry Lyndon. And apparently when he heard about this lens, he reached out to Zeiss and they just told him it would never work because the clearance at the rear was so minimal, but obviously he wasn't gonna take a no for an answer. So he went and had a custom built Mitchell camera made, which would work with the lens. And then he used, as mentioned, three of them to film a number of scenes in Barry Lyndon, including scenes lit by candlelight, which at the time was obviously unheard of. So such a cool lens, love the backstory to this one and not something that you would ever really expect to see come up for sale. But back in June of 2021, a copy came up at auction and ended up selling for 180,000 euros. So uh, love this one, super interesting. And obviously if you're a collector, this would be quite the find. Okay, and that brings us back to the start, the Leica Zero, the most expensive camera ever sold. And if you totaled up everything we've spoke about so far, you wouldn't even get close to this number. Back in June, 2022, a Leica Zero, number 105, as mentioned, the personal copy of Oscar Barnack, sold through Lights Auction for 14,400,000 euros. An absolutely staggering amount. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this or heard the news. I somehow missed it, but I just couldn't believe that amount when I first saw it. Okay, so that brings us to the end. 
going out with a bang. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Switching it up a little bit, you know, a little different than what I typically do on this channel, but uh, I've wanted to try some new things, so this was fun. So um, if you're bored, you're looking for something to do, I recommend jumping on some of these auction websites. Uh, Lights Auctions and Wetzler Auctions is what I used for this video. They're kind enough to let me use their photos and everything when I ask for permission. So thank you to them. But you know, you can go through all sorts of stuff dating back, you know, 10, 15, 20 years and find some like really cool stuff that if you're into like the history of photography or gear and whatnot, stuff that you've probably never seen before. So um, yeah, anyways, hope you enjoyed this. That wraps this up. I'm going to go now. Thank you for watching. I'll see you very soon.